getting everything ready. I uh, so I have my Vicky cell in front. I've got my brushes on the side. I have two different sizes. Uh, I tend to uh, do the smaller, smaller size for the smaller areas and the bigger size for the bigger areas because it can obviously hold more paint, less paint. Uh, it just depends on what you want. Uh, I also grabbed my paint and I'm gonna pulled up my tray. What we'll do when we're working on a specific project is we'll have all of the paints poured ahead of time and everybody gets their own set. We all kind of decide uh, what our preferred uh, water to paint mixture is and so we, we get our own because we like to personalize it. But if you can see on the screen we've got everything labeled. So we're painting a Mickey. Obviously we gotta, we gotta have a, a color for his shoes. We gotta have a color for, I think this is his tongue, uh, maybe, no, this is his tongue color. Uh, where's his shorts? There it is, over here, lobster number 17, which happens to be my favorite color. Uh, so, and we all label it differently. We've got the name of the paint, when it was strained, all of our information that we might need as the product is going forward. Uh, it's always good to know when your paint is poured so you don't end up getting a really, really old jar and things have turned or other things have happened too. <laughs> um, and then I take I take my paint. This is the paint that we use for Mickey's face. It's very bubbly right now. I just stirred it. I added a little bit of distilled water inside to kind of, uh, it was really thick when I opened the jar. So I just kind of stirred it around. Um, Get it to the consistency that you want. Everybody has their own preference on how that is. Um, I kind of tend to do mine like a, a very thick yogurt. If you think of like a Greek yogurt, that's usually where I start. Some of them need to be thicker, some of them need to be thinner. Um, Dave, you have a very interesting way to to describe your paint. Yeah, I like mine at the consistency where it's just you stir it with a stir stick and you pull the stick up and out, it goes boop, boop, boop. Get three good, three good bloops, and then that's just right. <laughs> and then, of course, like I have to show you guys this. This is like my favorite part of the of the start of the day. Is the first paint that goes in the water, like it's just kind of like a when it first goes in there, and it's like ooh, it's so pretty. <laughs> All right. So then we have, if you guys notice, we have two uh, jars of water up here. One, you always want to have a, a clean, clean water to get all of the excess paint. Um, if you're going to put, don't put this in the in the actual paint that you're using, but you want to make sure that your brush is clean. So this one we'll usually use to get all the paint off with a paintbrush, and then a final uh, cleansing <laughs> to finish the other one before it goes on the actual cell. Okay, now the moment you've all been waiting for, we're going to turn this on. So good. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try to get the area that does not have bubbles in it. So basically, I will load up the paintbrush with a pretty good amount of paint. Uh, you want to kind of literally just glop it on because you're going to be floating the paint over the top of the cell. So I'll just put it down. I'm going to turn this a little bit because I'm going to push it. And it's okay, since we have the gloves on, it's okay to touch the cell with your hand. I'm gonna push it up onto that line, but not over. Um, if you have ever watched anybody do your nails or have somebody's nails done, uh, it's kind of that same process. You wanna get up to that line and just kind of float it around. Antonio, what is it that you say? You said, like the line? No, when you, you like something and float with the paint, you like, Fill and float or something like that. Oh, pull and push. Yeah, pull and push. Yeah. <laughs> or fill it. <and> whatever. <laughs> so then I will actually rotate the cell around to make sure that I'm getting the correct uh, kind of uh, push up to the, the line. Yeah, Tony, you talk a little bit about splitting the line. You mentioned that. Okay. 
they train us to, when you're painting, you're supposed to uh, paint up to the line like Annie said, but you're supposed to split the line, which is very difficult to do. to that line as possible without going completely over it. So you want to kind of meet, the white has gone halfway onto that line and the flesh tone is going to the other half of the line. So that's, you don't want to overlap the colors. If I did this, see, it's a pretty thick and dense color uh, of what this is. If I put that over the white of Nikki's eyes, when we go to flip it over, you're going to be able to tell that there's another layer of paint behind that eye and it's gonna look like Mickey's got something kind of weird happening on his face. Uh, so you wanna try to be as neat as possible, even though in production you wouldn't really see the back of the cell. That would just be whoever's photographing um, would really only see that. But you still wanna be careful. You wanna, you wanna take pride in the work that you're doing and the, the legacy that this department is and, and, and have a presentable um, other side of the cell. <laughs> so I have not put paint down where this tongue is and I do not want to go into that space because I'm going to be filling that in with another color. So how do you know what colors to use? That is a very good question. And I'm going to fill this right here and I'll show you guys what we have. So again, get all that paint off of your brush. You don't want to leave it on the brush either because that'll it'll harden. Give it a good swirl on that one. Then I'll show you guys what we use. So we have kind of a cheat sheet that helps us figure out for each project that we're doing. Is called a color call-out and what we do is we will have the image of whatever character that we're working on and then we will actually have the name of each paint and where it is supposed to go according to that character um, as uh, <laughs> foolproof as this looks it's still possible to completely do it wrong <laughs> um, but this is a really good way to have kind of your instructions in front and even if you know what's supposed to go where, it's always good to have that check in front of you. A lot of times on the desk, I'll have it kind of pinned up next to whatever I'm working so that I have it as a quick glance. But, yeah. So how do you know where to start first? Is there a strategy which colors you put next to each other? I think all of us have our own preference of how we do that. For me, I tend to go... Usually the plan goes smallest section to the biggest uh, and then darkest color to the lightest. So I might start um, in under normal situation with the black so that we, we have already filled that in for you guys. So I would have started with the black because it's the darkest. If any paint goes over that black, how I talked about the white of the eyes, it's not going to matter. It won't, the black is not going to show any of that paint. So I, I like to do that and then get the little tiny areas will usually get done first. Um, that's not as exciting to watch because it's just like, boom, and it's done. Uh, so I figured I'd start with the bigger ones today. So always the plan, throw it away and start a new plan, right? <laughs> I think we're gonna do, we're gonna do Mickey's pants. But before we do that, I'll flip this over really quickly without touching it down see what it starts to look like on the back side and the reason we have the white table underneath is so that we can tell if we have missed any parts uh, up to the line so I don't know if you guys can see but I have actually missed a tiny section by his tongue and a tiny section by his eye where the light is coming through that line and the color there's a separation so I will want to go back and make sure that that is filled in uh, during production time, if that was photographed, it would have this like blaringly white spot on the color and everybody would know that whoever was painting it. Was <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start 
start with our lobster 17. That's what the paint looks like when it is not stirred. You can see how it's separated. Um, so I like to take my, actually that had other paint. You don't want to mix the paint. So I'm going to get a new cotton swab. Kind of stir that around. This is where you get the bubbles in it. So normally I'd go slower, but. And it's a little thick for my liking. It's not, it's not really drippy. So I'm going to take my distilled water and do a tiny bit on there in. This part is actually, it's pretty relaxing. I, I have a, 
I get really stressed out when it's time to ink because you have to have amazing control, not only of your hands, your fingers, but also like Antonio was saying, with your, your arms and your shoulder, um, and also your upper body. You just gotta, you have to make sure that you're doing those lines perfectly. But with painting, man, it's, it's pretty relaxing. You can put some music on, you can just sit here and, and color in. We all know how, how relaxing those coloring books are. This is kind of like the Disney version. All right, let's thank Annie for showing us the painting process. I'm gonna ask her to keep painting and take some questions from the audience if we have them. Right here, please. Annie, will you show us the final finished cell? Pull it out of our magic oven? <laughs> I would absolutely do. Okay. <clears throat> Right. Oh no, it's, no it has its, it's on its own. And I just want to put in another plug. It's really extraordinary to look at our special edition. Only a hundred cells made, numbered. You can see it in the Marketplace Expo. I want you to be able to check that out. It'll be available next year. It's attached. Oh, just kidding. It's too smart for me. Okay. Thank you on that too. Alright, you guys ready? Okay, so that is what it looks like. So that's what it looks like on the front, all nice and pretty and put together and cleaned up. We have um, rags that do not scratch the cell. We will continue to wear gloves through this whole process while we're cleaning it. Uh, make sure there's no dust. And then I will show you guys the back side of water. Just kidding. <laughs> Okay, I'll turn it around for you. So that's what it will look like from the back. So you you can see that it doesn't really matter if it's if it's not perfect, but it's nice when it is. So that when you turn it around, you can see where where exactly the paint has been applied, um, how it all lights up together. All right, let's give a round of applause for another for the artist. All right, before we go, we have a special surprise for you. A while back, the Ethan Page Department was asked to participate in a Mickey Mouse documentary that will be coming to Disney Plus soon. But we wanted to share a sneak peek from the film for you. Would you like that? Yay! All right, excellent. You'll be one of the first audience to see any of this. Thank you. Mickey Mouse is probably the most difficult character to ink because of all the curves. That's the most difficult part of inking is inking circles. And Mickey Mouse is full of circles. Your job as an inker is translating the animator's work onto the cell. You don't have any room to go outside of that, because if you do that, you change their intention. You change their work. They say it takes about 15 years of consistent inking, 80 hours a day, five times a week for 15 years to become a master inker. There's only a few of us in the ink and paint department now, but it used to be hundreds, and for a long time, it was all women. The thousands of pencil drawings go to the inking department. Here, hundreds of pretty girls cover the drawings with sheets of transparent celluloid. Then they painstakingly trace every line of every drawing in ink, following exactly in every detail the original animation drawing. The role of the inkers and painters gets glossed over into this long line of pretty girls who traced and colored. When what they were accomplishing was mind-blowing, these women were artists in their own way. In the Studio Paint Laboratory, all colors used are made up from secret formulas. Expert chemists develop more than 1,500 different shades of color for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Color forever.
transforms the world of Mickey Mouse. Pastel is his flesh, his tongue, miracle his shoes, lobster his pants. We are not really brushing, it's actually dropping a glob of paint and then we just push it to the edges because we want to make the paint look as opaque as possible. When I'm inking or painting Mickey Mouse, it just takes me back to when Walt first created Mickey Mouse. So now that we're done with it, this is what it looks like from the front. Thank you for spending time with us. Have a great D23 Expo, everyone.